while afterwards, I was really messed up, you know, when Michael died. Elizabeth Venable met Michael through her work with Fund for Empowerment. And he was a great talker, always so compassionate. She says they talked nearly every day until he died in the summer of 22. It did turn out that it was a combination of heat and methamphetamine. It was a total out of the blue, and yet it was so predictable. You know, of course he did. You know, of course Michael died, you know, because that's what people do in Phoenix. They, they die, you know, on the sidewalk. Last year, two out of every three heat death cases involved drugs. So fentanyl definitely is a drug that is abused in, in the community. Uh, methamphetamine also is a drug that's abused in the community. 330 people died in Maricopa County last year from meth and heat exposure. Meth increases blood pressure, heart rate, body temperature, and dehydration, while also diminishing the feeling of overheating, a dangerous combination with Arizona's extreme heat. If your level of consciousness is altered, your recognition of the symptoms of heat exhaustion or even worse, uh, heat stroke, may go unnoticed for a period of time and therefore progress. Dr. William Ellert is the chief medical director for Circle of the City, an organization providing health care and hydration to people out on the street. Our street medicine team is now giving IV hydration uh, on the streets for people that may be beyond the point where oral or taking fluid by mouth is able to resolve their symptoms. And we've been able, I think, to keep a number of people out of the emergency room. The city of Phoenix is handing out pamphlets about heat and drug use, just trying to educate people in the community about the risk of heat, but also ways to spot signs of overdoses and those symptoms. For more information, you can head to our website at azfamily.com. Reporting in Phoenix, Alexis Dominguez for Arizona's Family. Alexis, thank you. New at 5, the fight over a controversial immigration bill on the ballot could now be headed to the state Supreme Court. Immigration advocates are appealing a Superior Court judge's decision that the Secure the Border initiative can stay on the ballot. They tried to argue it's covering more than a single subject and failed. If approved by voters, local law enforcement would be allowed to arrest anyone caught crossing into the states illegally. This is similar to a law in Texas that's tied up in